Let's go quickly to Psalms, the 8th chapter. And this is the 12th series of authority and dominion, but we're talking about dominion now. We've been talking about authority. Uh, we're learning how to release our authority. We're, we're learning our dominion. And uh, these are things that are so important. We have been learning and operating in that anointing. And I tell you what, things are happening in the spirit realm when you start moving in that realm. You don't give up. You don't back down to the enemy. You don't put up with anything. You say, no, 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 no. I take my authority in the name of Jesus. Anything, anything that's popping up in your life, anything. Hallelujah. You put it up. Don't put up with strife. Don't put up with sickness, division. Don't put up with poverty. Don't put up with wokeness. Don't put up with any attitude that the enemy's trying to release upon this church, upon the people of the church. Uh, the reason why he's doing that is he's trying to pull you from love. Hallelujah. Amen. From love. If he can pull you from love, he's, he knows he's got, your, he's got power over you. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen to what it says in Psalms, the eighth chapter. Uh, this is our foundational scripture. Uh, verses six. Well, let's read verses four. Hallelujah. Amen. What is man... That thou, for, thou art mindful of him. What is man? I can, uh, Billy Brim says, uh, she heard the angel say, what is man? 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 What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him. Boy, I tell you, that's powerful. The son of man that thou visited him. For thou hast made him a little lower than, the, than Elohim. That word angel should have been Elohim made him little lower than Elohim, and has crowned man, him, with glory and honor. Say, say with me, I have glory and I have honor. Amen. Thou madest him, man, to have dominion over the works of thine hands. This is God's hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. That's dominion, ladies and gentlemen. God himself put mankind, you and me, in charge and given us dominion and put all things under our feet. All things are under your feet. Hallelujah. Amen. And I said something weeks ago, and I'm going to say it again because this has to get deep into your heart because, see, religiosity somehow keeps us away from this scripture. In fact, some will translate, he's not talking about man, but he's talking about God. Put all things under God's hand. No, you have to read it right. You have to read it. Go to every translation. Go to the Amplified Classic, and you'll see it even clearer. Go to the NLT. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, notice this. God will not interfere. Now, understand, before you think anything different, I want you to hear me. God will not interfere with the affairs of this earth. Whenever he wants, because he has respect for the dominion of man. He can't, he can't change it, because once he changes it, everything else changes. In other words, precedent was formed here. Uh, in a court of law, that's what you look for, precedent. If you can show precedent, and they'll go by precedent to see what how the law was acted upon, or cases was acted upon. And when they find the precedent, that's what they say. That's the rule. That's the rule from now on. That's why the enemy is trying to change laws uh, here recently, legislations and all these things, to get the precedent out of the way. But thank God that prayer is going to keep us in the precedence of God's ruling. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say amen? So in other words, he respects you. Uh, think about it. If God interfered, then why is there so much destruction? Now, that's a good question. Now, answer that. Who, who is the Lord of destruction? Not God. So it would be not God. It's the enemy. But he's wanting believers. That's you and me. Are you with me, church? Wanting believers. That's you and me. Holy Ghost believers filled with the knowledge of the word, full of his authority, full of dominion, knowing the, the, the precedent that he's established on earth through Jesus Christ, through our Father, hallelujah. And when he finds those that are activated, walking with that, those are the ones that are going to change things on this earth. Come on, church. When you pray for tornadoes, tornadoes against tornadoes, don't they submit to you? Come on, say with me, amen. 
when, when your children are sick and you lay hands on them, don't, don't, doesn't sickness submit to you? Come on, church. When the enemy starts to messing, doesn't the enemy submit to you because you are walking in an authority and the enemy knows, no, he knows who you are. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Now, a Christian that doesn't know who they are and says, well, you know, God's in control and, you know, I know God uh, brought me through this and he'll take me out and, you know, the cancer that, that I have, you know, he's just uh, teaching me how to be more aggressive in prayer. <laughs> Come on, church. No, the enemy uh, attacked you. You just got to be aggressive in prayer now. And let me just say something now. Amen. Be aggressive now so that the word will get in your heart enough so when times of trial do come, what comes out of your heart is the word of God. Amen. amen. See, the word of God needs to come out of you every time. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, he's under my feet. Say, he's under my feet. I want you to say, he's under my beautiful feet. Amen. You do have beautiful feet. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because you have the gospel of peace. Jesus, hallelujah, amen. So dominion is, in God, is really a God-given gift to, to you that requires his supernatural anointing on your life. Amen, anointing. It's going to take faith, ladies and gentlemen, amen. It's going to take faith walking in the anointing, walking in dominion, walking in, in, in authority. But I'm going to listen, I'm going to, it's going to take faith walking in love. How many of you have been tried by the love way or the enemy way? against the love way every day every day amen listen folks uh, when we don't walk with the word and we don't know the word then we'll fall victim and pray to the enemy amen say with me yes and amen, yes and, amen. and now pastor christine said when you say amen that means so be it but listen so be it means yes in god all his ways are yes say with me yes Never think, well, God, you know, he's always saying no to me. I hear people say, well, you know, God can say yes, but he also can tell you no. No, the Bible says in God, he is, he is always a yes God. Amen. Hallelujah. You just got to know your desires and how to pray his will. Hallelujah. Amen. So the Lord anoints you. Say with me, I'm anointed. Hallelujah. Amen. So operating, Pastor Christine, pass me the water, please. Operating in the anointing. I got it right here. Operating in the anointing, hallelujah, amen, is what gives you the ability. It gives me the ability to, to, uh, to do anything in this life. Say with me, I live long and strong by the anointing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to pray that. Uh, somebody said, you're getting old. I said, no, I'm getting young in Jesus. I'm young in Jesus. I'm old. Somebody said, and this was a Christian. Now, now listen, folks. Are y'all with me? Somebody said the other day, you never know when your next breath of air, oh, how, how did they say it? You never know when your last breath is. Right? And then there must have been 50 people that said, yes and amen, yes and amen, yes and amen. I saw it, I said, no! I'm not going to agree with that. Because my Bible says different to that. He gives us long life. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm, I'm going to live long. Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to live long and strong. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, say it. You got to live long and strong. Don't, don't be settled with this world. Well, you know, 85 is, is the norm. No, the norm to the world is 90 now. But we're going to live long past 90. Brother Keith, past 90. Amen. All of us will still be... Painting the rails. <laughs> All of us will be doing things at 100. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, let's, let's cut some grass, guys. I know you're 100, but you can pull a lot more. Amen. Or push a lot more. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, say with me, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, Y'all look, look like, is it possible? It's possible. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, notice this. Um, um, these, these, we've been talking about dominion. Now, listen to this. You've got to go back and listen to number one, dominion which was point number eight, series number eight, where it talks about operate in the anointing. Dominion means operating in the anointing. Dominion means operating in the anointing, amen? And then the second one was, dominion means prospering financially. Folks, listen, you get a hold of that, you take your dominion over that, you'll prosper financially. Uh, a dominion, like, like DeMilo said, is excelling to the highest place. I talked about it in the third series, uh, I talked about uh, dominion is excelling to the highest place possible. 
Don't ever think you can't excel. Don't ever think you've reached top. There's more to go. Don't ever try to plateau with God. There's more to go. Don't ever, I know you don't think like this. Don't ever think that we've learned it all. No, no, no. There's more to learn. Do you know there's so much we're only using? Maybe according to the medical science, we're only using 10% of our brain capacity. What happened to the 80%? Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, uh, listen, dominion is expecting to be blessed in famine, which I spoke on it, what was it, uh, Wednesday, uh, Sunday, last Sunday. I'm expecting to be blessed in this famine time. Hallelujah. Amen. Money in the mail, refunds and rebates, not affected by high increase. Hallelujah. Amen. Food in my cupboard, in my, in my refrigerator. Eaten wonderfully every day. Hallelujah. Amen. And then uh, Wednesday was the dominion. And very important, I want you to listen to this. Dominion is operating, expecting to be healed. Folks, if you're having issues that are just reoccurring in your body, reoccurring body, you need not to put up with that. If you're having issues that are just reoccurring and you're, you're fine with it, and, but it troubles you, you know that's not normal. It's not normal according to the word. Be expecting to have dominion over your body to be healed. Come on, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Now notice this. Today I'm going to talk to you about uh, dominion. Expect to have uh, to destroy every yoke. Every yoke. Every yoke. Don't put up with it. Every situation. You see what I'm saying? Uh, there, was, <laughs> uh, there was some neighbors around the corner that uh, it was a rental house. And we, we live in a nice area, but there's a lot of investors that buy rental houses. And, and rental houses, if you're not careful with rental house, you can put in the wrong people. Especially if, if, uh, if uh, uh, renters that can't rent houses, they'll look toward, um, what's it called, housing authority to find the Section 8 which is a guaranteed monthly payment in your bank. If you're, if, you're, if you're a house owner and you're renting a property, you have guaranteed money every month from the government in your, in your bank. It's through the housing authority. Uh, and so a lot of people live that way. Well, in our neighborhood, uh, there's a couple houses that I know of that, uh, that are beautiful houses, but I guess they put it on the market for a long time and they couldn't get renters, and all of a sudden they, uh, they got some families in there from the from that section, what is it, section eight, and uh, all of a sudden you got five cars in the driveway. Seven cars, you counted them, seven cars in the driveway. And you've got a lot of, fa lot of families, a lot of families living in there. And then, and then what they want to do is, is, is they want to bring, each one wants to bring their stuff, but they don't fit in the house, so it's in the front yard. And then you have refrigerators in the front yard, you have stoves in the front yard, you have cars that are, a car burned down in their front yard and they left it there. Well, we would drive by there and, and, and you know, of course, the, um, the, the homeowner association was always getting after them and threatening them and all that and, and uh, people complaining over, over that. And um, finally, I said, honey, we're going to drive by there, but we're going to drive by there to pray. We're not going to drive by there to just get upset because it's going to upset you. You know what I'm talking about? When you got an 18-wheeler, when you got a tractor tire in the front street gutter, are you with me? What, they use those tractors to build weights, right? And then, of course, uh, they put basketball courts in the street and they start painting the street. And that's your street. That's your main street. Kids everywhere coming from all over playing basketball on a Friday night late. And all you hear is this music at night. So finally, uh, I told Pastor Christine, we're going to drive by there, but we're going to have an agenda. We're going to pray for those families, and we're going to pray that they will find a big house in some big property where they will go and enjoy without being, you know, uh, always threatened or whatever, you know. So we drive by there every time we go to church, and we drive, we pray. Finally, there was a prayer that we prayed, and that right there was the one that launched it. We felt the anointing launch it. And this was this prayer. Father, I live in this area, so I take my dominion and authority in this area and over this neighborhood, and I speak to the spirit that has them possessed, that has them bound, and I started naming all the spirits. And we can feel such a breakthrough. And it was until about a week later, big trash company comes, and in the front of the street, there's this huge mound of, of junk. Well, actually, furniture. 
They moved out and left all their furniture. Every, are y'all with me, church? Are y'all listening? They moved out and, and the big junk trash could, didn't want to pick it up because it was just too much. I don't know if there's rulings on that, how much you could throw away. And they left it out there. The homeowner had to hire two trailers to pick them up and to move them. And now the homeowner has to hire contractors to paint it, to fix it up. And I told my wife, to see, pray that now the homeowner's eyes will open up and they will see what they need to do next time to rent this house. Listen, folks, it, it, you've got to realize that. And so this is the authority that I'm talking about. Are y'all with me? Are y'all okay? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Go with me quickly now to Genesis, the 27th chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis, the 27th chapter. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, folks, when I give you, when I give you um, testimonial, I'm not here to make fun of people. I'm here to address the spirits that have people bound. That's a fine line. And if you're thinking that you're going to pray against people, you have to get your direction right. It's against a spirit. It's a spirit. Amen. It's a spirit. We're not going to put up with that. Besides where I live, I'm not going to put up with that. But it's a spirit. Those people don't want to live that way. Those people don't want all those homes, all those other people in there. You try to get four or five families to live with you. Amen. Come on. Come on, look at me, everybody. Uh, you've ever had people living with you that you say, oh, I wish they would just get up and go? Come on, church. Amen. It's not fun. I like just me and Christine in my house, enjoying our house. Amen. When, when you have people living, hallelujah, with you. Amen. It's not fun. Genesis, the 27th chapter, verse 40. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this is a story which, which you have to read it to understand let me give you just a synopsis of it. Here's Jacob and Isaac, uh, Esau. Esau was going to get the blessing, but Jacob's mama tricked, and the hands were laid on Jacob to get the blessing. You remember that story? I want you to read that now. Verses 38, Esau said unto his father, Esau needed the blessing, but he didn't get the blessing. Jacob got the blessing. Esau said to his father, Has thou blessed, has thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. He missed the blessing. He missed the timing. And yet there are other blessings, but he missed the granddaddy of them all, the blessing that he pronounced on Jacob. Now this is what the enemy does. The enemy knows you're blessed by Jesus in the Word, but if you don't know the Word, I talk about you meaning us, if we don't know the Word, then the enemy can take what God has already done through Jesus Christ in His Word to bless us. Amen? Now notice what happened here uh, in verses 39. And Isaac said, Father, and Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of honey from above. And by sword shalt thou live and shalt serve thy brother. In other words, the rest of your days, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to use that sword to stay alive, but you're going to have to serve your younger brother here. And it shall come to pass when thou, you Isaac, uh, Esau, you, excuse me, you Esau, it shall come to pass. Thou shall have dominion that thou shall break his yoke from off thy neck. Now what's he saying? Now this is powerful. You've got to understand this. It shall come to pass when the body of Christ recognize their dominion, they shall break the yoke off their neck. Amen. Amen? Amen? Now notice this. When you decide to break free, and let me read it to you from the, from the New Living Translation. It says, the same scripture. When you decide to break free, you shall shake his yoke from your neck. Amen. Listen to what the Message Bible says. But when you can't take it anymore, 
You'll break loose and run free. Folks, when is enough enough? I'm asking you this. When is enough enough? It's now. I'm tired of the enemy's yoke upon my life. That's the attitude we need to have. I'm tired of the way it is in my life. I'm tired with the situation in this country. I'm tired with the situation in our city. I'm tired with the situation in my job. I'm tired with the situation in my home. I'm tired with the situation. I'm tired. When is it enough? That's what, the, that's what Esau, that's what Isaac told his son. When you have enough and you understand your dominion, you then will break off the yoke off your neck. And that's what the church has to recognize. That's why the church is not free. Now, I say church because there are a lot of Christians that you and I know. I know more Christians than, than the unbeliever. But I know the unbeliever doesn't know the word. So I know the unbeliever has reason to talk that way. But when a Christian talks that way, when he has the word or she has the word, there's no reason why they need to talk that way. That means they're living and they don't know their dominion. Can you say amen? Now, folks, listen, this is where you and I have to come in. We've got to change people's wordings for, from the dominion. We've got to teach them. So that lady that said on Facebook about no one knows your next breath, I had to write her and say, let me tell you something. This is what the Bible says. This is where, how you live long. And this is how you guarantee tomorrow's breath by the word of God. And I said, oh, God, no, no, they don't come back. And no, I, I, I don't like, I just don't like it. Stuff like that. And then I found out she's a pastor. You see what I'm saying? A pastor. Now, if she's watching or if they're watching, listen, it, it's, don't get offended, upset. It's the truth. It's the truth. I'd rather have somebody tell me the truth. And be, they lie to me and worry about offending me. Tell me the truth. And the word of God, the word of God, put up, uh, thank you, Brother D, for that. Put up that. This is, this is the time for correction. Amen. Say with me, amen. This is the time for direction. Amen. Say with me, this is the time for protection. Say with me, amen. This is the time of perfection. Hallelujah. We're going somewhere. We're getting perfect. <laughs> I'm getting perfect. You're getting perfect. We're getting perfect. Come on. Everybody say, we're getting perfect in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You're getting perfect. Hallelujah. Say it in faith. Say it in faith, hallelujah, amen. That's taking dominion, ladies and gentlemen. Take dominion over your enemies. I'm not putting up with things of the enemy that's coming to attack my life. I'm not going to put up with that. I'm not putting up with depression. Listen, folks, a, a believer can be depressed, oppressed, but never possessed because you have Jesus. But if you have depression and you, you find that depression always comes at a certain cycle, then when is enough for you? I think today you need to say, I'm breaking that yoke of depression off my life. Come on, church. Amen. See, see, you know when depression is coming. You know when the cloud of depression is coming. You know that feeling. You know that sunken heart feeling. And you're a believer. And the first thing you say, oh, oh, Jesus, just help me through this. No, 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 no. That's not the way to pray. Come on, church. When it comes, you say, no, nah, devil, you're not coming here again in Jesus' name. I take authority over depression. Depression, go. I send you to the desert in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. You've got to say it. Well, pastor, that's not my character. I think we better get into the character of the word of God now. Amen. If enough is enough. Come on, church. Huh? Uh, see, the devil wants to weigh you down in sin. He wants to uh, oppress you. He wants to attack you. He wants to put yokes uh, 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 and reload you with more yokes. Come on, church. More yokes. Have, you know what I'm talking about? You have a yoke, and all of a sudden, more yokes come on you, and then more yokes come on you, and then more yokes come on you, and then when you go to church, you find out you got to take the yokes off, and you just try, but you can't. No, you can take them off right now by the word of God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. We, uh, he wants to stop what the enemy really, listen to this, the enemy wants to stop really what God has already set in motion in your life. What God has already set in motion in your life. If you don't know 
the motion that God has set in you, I got to tell you, it's a good thing. It's a good plan. You have a good plan ahead of you. You've got a good plan. Your tomorrow is great because the Bible says it. Your future is bright because the Bible says it. Oh, Father, hallelujah. Help me out, somebody. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Father has a plan for you. Hallelujah. And the enemy knows if you're a creation of God and you know your dominion, oh, he can't put the yoke on you any longer. He's not going to put the yoke of depression on me. He's not going to put the yoke of oppression on me. He's not going to put the yoke of poverty on me. He's not going to put the yoke of sickness on me. Come on, church. The devil can't mess with you when you know your dominion. Come on, say with me, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Even if you have an ingrown tone, to talk to your nail, nail in the name of Jesus, you come straight. You grow straight in Jesus' name. In fact, you get beautiful feet. <laughs> you get beautiful feet in Jesus' name. Amen. There's a joke about that, Pastor Christine. Loves to see me barefoot. She says, there's something about your feet are beautiful. I'm going to tell you something. My feet were ugly because when we were growing up, uh, our, my, my parents, of course, you know, we did, they did their best, but I remember wearing shoes that my toes were always tight. Oh, mama, amen. I mean, tight toes and my, somehow my feet started growing crooked in my toes and, and, you know, instead of me using clippers to cut my nails out, yank them off. <laughs> amen, that's right, sister, amen. So they were ugly, right? I was embarrassed to be barefoot. I never wore shorts, never wore sandals. In Texas, when you're hot, you know, I never wore shorts and sandals. Until finally, I started taking care of my feet, started speaking my feet. And when I became a pastor and a preacher, I started preaching. And, and then all of a sudden, she started saying, you're, you have the most beautiful feet, most beautiful feet. And now she says, you have the most beautiful feet. And I would say, I like to go in public in sandals now. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I like to go and wear, wear shorts. I mean, shorts, because it's hot out here. Hallelujah. Amen. But I was embarrassed. Why? Took dominion over my feet. Come on, church. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Dominion. When you take dominion, that means you're destroying every yoke. Every yoke. Say so me, every yoke. Every yoke. You're tapping into that destroying Yoke destroying anointing, church. Hallelujah. Amen. It's at your fingertips. Come on, church. That anointing, that, that yoke breaking anointing is at your fingertips. Every time you utter the word of God and the word of God, the anointing is released to destroy, to break yokes in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time to get tough, church. Come on. It's time to get tough. It's time to break loose. It's time to break bondages off your life in Jesus name start today start today and start breaking every bondage you every, you know your body you know your thought you know your heart you start one start breaking it number two start breaking it you keep breaking it and from that moment on just keep breaking every bondage that the Holy Spirit shows you in Jesus name come on hallelujah amen you can do it church you can do it amen go meet a mic of the seventh chapter it's time to get tough church in this era that we're living, it's time to arise out of the darkness and into the marvelous light with your authority in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Every one of us, if one could put a thousand, two can put ten thousand. If three can put uh, a million, four, it just, the numbers just quadruple in, in, in numbers by the anointing that's in this house. Hallelujah. Amen. You go and you take your authority wherever you are. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to encourage you, whenever you drive in this, down this street and out that street, you take your authority over this neighborhood. We're cleaning it up for Jesus. We're cleaning it up for Jesus. We're, we're bringing in, we're asking God, God, bring in families that are fresh and want to know you and get rid of all the drugs and all the nasty stuff and deliver people, hallelujah, set them free. Just pray with us. Pray. I pray every time I drive up here. Just pray every time, hallelujah, amen. And then this morning we found someone sleeping or we found someone that was sleeping in these stairways with a mattress and everything and, and brother DeMilo threw everything out there and, and you know it's someone that that senses the peace of God but doesn't need to be homeless senses the peace of God we don't know that person but now we're going to pray and and bind that stronghold off that oh, that person we don't know who it is are you with me Micah all right notice this I'm going to read to you from the the good, the, the, the good news translation. Look, look what Micah, the seventh chapter, verses eight. Our enemies have no reason to gloat over us. Micah 7, 8. We have fallen, but we will rise again. We have fallen, but we will rise again. We are in darkness now, 
but the Lord will give us light. Now, Micah is a prophet. What's he saying? He's prophesying some things here. When your enemies come at you, they have no reason to gloat over you. Satan, Satan has no reason to gloat over you. Don't give them reason to gloat over you. You may have fallen. You may have fallen. We all have fallen in some ways and sometimes. But we'll rise again. I'll rise up again. See, that has to be your attitude. I may have this yoke that has me bound and I fail, but I'm going to break it in the name of Jesus, but I shall rise again. I shall rise again. Say with me. I shall rise again. I shall rise again. Amen. See, see, the enemy has no reason to gloat over you because now you're risen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, Micah was talking about the Jewish, the Israelites, the Israel, uh, the, the enemy was gloating over them, destroying them. And God says, ah, no more. They're not going to gloat over them no more. They're going to rise up. They may be in darkness, but they're coming to light. Church, you may have been in darkness, but today I'm believing you're getting revelation of the light of Jesus Christ and you're coming out. You're coming out. Say to me, I'm coming out. Say to me, I'm coming out now. Say to me, I'm coming out now. I'm coming out now. I'm not going to stop till we say it. I'm coming out now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Rising up. Hallelujah. Amen. Command failure. Listen, folks, failure, poverty, addiction, any yoke to leave you now in the name of Jesus. I want to say that again, command failure. People are living on failure. People are, 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 are simply because they got turned down with something, they're still living in that and that, they don't move any further. I want to say this again by the Spirit of God. If something has kept you from moving forward, you're rising up now to move forward. Amen? If something held you back for some reason, maybe something, I don't know, some, Holy Ghost, yeah, I know what you're saying. If financial situations held you back and, and you're not moving forward because it's holding you back, that's a yoke that's over your life. You need to say, no, I'm busting loose. First, I'm moving and God shall provide. Shall, God will provide my future. God will provide my desires. God will provide my vision. God will provide my direction. God will do it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. God will do it. Command, command it. Command poverty, addiction, or any other yoke to leave you now. Say with me, amen, leave me now. Leave me now in Jesus' name. See, when is enough, ladies and gentlemen? When is enough? When are you going to say enough is enough? enough? Amen. <laughs> enough is enough. Listen, folks, if a boxer, he gets in a ring, and that opponent is really a heavy, heavy boxer, and he's hitting on you, you're not going to take it any longer. You're going to do everything you can to stop those punches from coming at you. Even though you know that he is strong and strong and strong and tough, you're going to do everything you can to protect, the, protect yourself. But, but the possibility of having one punch to knock him out, and then you're doing everything you can, all of a sudden you get a drive in you to say enough is enough, and you happen to just send that lefty or righty, or I'm lefty, so I'm speaking lefty. You send your lefty right between those two, club, those two gloves, and you hit him right between the nose and the teeth, and he falls back and he's out. And you say, that's enough. Enough was enough with me. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what you got to do, ladies and gentlemen. You got to do that. Enough is enough today. 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 September 25th on my pastor's birthday and Yom Kippur and uh, Rosh Hashan. It's enough. It's enough. It's enough. I'm taking my time. I'm breaking the yoke right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to see something. Go with me to Nahum. Another prophet, Nahum. Now, these are a little hard to find, but I'm going to give you time to find them. I, have, I already saved it, so I can read it. Nahum. When you have it, say amen, Pastor. Nahum 1, 9. Folks, you have dominion. I want you to know something. Know your dominion and know what it means. Now, notice this. Verses 9 says this. Whatever... They plot against the Lord. He will bring an end. 
trouble will not come a second time. Reoccurring issues, don't let them come again a second time. Don't put up with it. Third time is too long. According to the scripture, it's a plot to destroy your future in Jesus. And if the enemy tries to destroy your future in Jesus, he's coming against God. And I want to say something. Folks, don't come against the anointed one. You are the anointed one. Don't let the enemy come against you. People that rise up against the anointed, pray for them because they don't realize what they're doing. They're opening a big door of destruction in their walk. Folks, listen, you know, you, you, you okay, I want to say this. Sometimes, sometimes we tend to talk about certain preachers of what they preach. Pray for them. Just pray for them. Um, pray for me. Sometimes if you don't agree with what I'm, what I'm saying and you start talking to your husband, wife, or children, or family, or something, uh, just pray. Because see, the word here, you're coming against God. Now notice what it says here. Whatever they plot against the Lord, say with me, that's me. The Lord's in you. You're anointed of God. Whatever they plot against the Lord, which is me, the Lord in me, he will bring to an end. God will bring to an end. That's why it's important to pray for your enemies. Pray for those that, 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 that just, just uh, what is it, uh, those that come against you? Pray for those people. Pray for those. You know, folks, uh, not too long ago, not too long ago, I'm just, in, I'm, you know, I'm taking care of my, my grandbabies. We're having a great time. And all of a sudden, the doorbell rings. And, and so I have a sign that says, uh, no, what was it? No, uh, no solicitors, so we don't get people coming selling. But somehow this door rang, and my grandson said, Dad, there's a lady out there. I said, I said, I was, I said what in the world are they doing here? So, and I'm in shorts. So I'm, I'm, you know, I just have a muscle shirt on or a T-shirt. And so, you know, I want to look presentable, so I run to my room and put on a a nice shirt, and you know, then I go out there and I open the door. I say, yes, and it was a sister that used to come to our church years ago, years ago, years ago. You don't know her, years ago. But she came and she says, hi, pastor. I said, is, I said, is that, come on in, come on in. First of all, what are you doing here? I'm shocked because how she knew my address, I don't know. And then she came, I brought her in and, and she got to say hi to the gang, grandkids and and got this saying, Pastor Christine's, I think she's putting on her makeup in the room. We're getting ready for something. She's getting ready for something. I don't remember what it was. And, and church, yeah, what it was, church, it was Wednesday. She starts to cry in my living room. I said, what's the matter, sister? She said, I got to tell you something. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I said, sister, um, and I knew where she, where she was going because I remember. It's like the Holy Spirit showed me immediately the situation. Bam! I knew it. And I just let her talk, let her heart come out. And she said, forgive me. I've been, asking, I've, been, I've been asking the Lord when I should do it, and, and, I, and, and I need to do it now. But I kind of held back because the devil was making me feel like I shouldn't forgive. I shouldn't ask for forgiveness because such and such, da, 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 whatever. And finally, I got her hands. I said, look at me, sister. I love you in the love of the Lord. And what you did was under the enemy's authority. But now you've got your eyes open, right? She said, yes, I forgive you in the name of Jesus. And I hugged her. Well, after when she's leaving, uh, I asked her, so how's everything going? How's your husband? And that was the issue that hit. Bam! Turned around and, and said, we got a divorce. Lost my home. Lost my relationship with my children. And I said, sister, keep walking in Jesus. So, you know, I wanted to change it to make her feel more because I know, what, I know she was troubled. But I believe she came to her knowledge and understanding of what hindered her in her life. She came against, her, she came against Pastor. I'll never forget it. It hurt us, but I loved her during that time. I forgave her. But I prayed, Lord, oh, Jesus, I pray. Oh, Jesus, I pray. And guess what happened? The door opened up. That's why it's so important, whatever they plot against the Lord, against you and me. The Bible says he will bring an end. Trouble, not, trouble will not come a second time. 
I want you to say, I want you to think about that. Trouble will not come to me a second time. So Lord, today, on this day, I'm breaking every yoke off my life. I'm breaking everything. I ask you to forgive me. I ask you, I put it under the blood. I walk clean afresh. I anoint my life from this moment on. I'm a believer stronger in you. I have no thoughts against anyone. Lord, I release that person. I release that person. I release this person. I release this person in Jesus' name because, Lord, there's not a second time of a problem coming to me in Jesus' name. Come on, George. Not a second time. Not a second time. Can you say amen? No more second time. Say me, no more second time. No more second. Amen. First time should never have happened. First time should never happen if you knew the word. But thank God for the word. We're not going to get beat up we're not going to be beat down. We're rising up because of the word of God. I'm rising up now in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. And let the Lord show you things. Let the Lord show you things to come, how to pray. Take communion as you, as you release things into the spirit realm, as you release things. Uh, release, I'm talking about release people. If people have hurt you years ago and it still comes up in your spirit, release them in the name of Jesus by the power of God and take communion over it. Amen? Say, Father, that... This is being released off my life now because no yoke is going to have me controlled any longer in Jesus' name. Amen? See, when you don't forgive, you're holding that person in bondage too. You know that, right? And that person's holding you in the bondage. Oh, they, you may forgot about it or you may think you forgot it, but, but the devil knows how to bring seasons back and how to bring little things back to touch you, to hurt you, to remind you of the past. But you rise up to victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, rise up to victory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Pastor Christine says, not on my watch. Not on my watch. That ought to get in our spirit. Devil, not on my watch. Not on my watch. Pastor used to say years ago, I ain't poor. He used to say, I ain't poor no more. I ain't poor no more. See, when is enough? I ain't poor no more. Come on, church. Amen. amen. Come on, church. I, I, I like to say this. This enough is enough. This is enough is enough. This enough. This is enough. Amen. amen. Break off every yoke, ladies and gentlemen. Break off every yoke. Get out from under every burden. Every burden. Every burden. Take your seat of authority. Listen, folks. Uh, I, <laughs> we had a little house that had some solar panels that were bigger than the house. And I remember the Lord said, don't you get them. Don't you go to that meeting. They were giving us all kinds of uh, free coffee. Probably that coffee but didn't broke the next day. They were giving us a free steak dinner at some steakhouse. Uh, and, uh, and we went to a sales pitch. And I know the Holy Ghost says, don't you do it. Don't you get into it. But he was an aggressive salesman, right? Well, here we're getting some, here we're getting some solar panels. Bigger than the house. They never work, ladies and gentlemen. Never, never. He did, in Texas, you, know, you, can, you can lay an egg on your roof and it'll, it'll cook, but for some reason, the water heater just was not enough heat. I mean, I'd take a shower and she'd go in there and get cold on her. And he were paying a lot of money. And I know the Lord told me not to do it. And I asked, Lord, I, I, I kneeled in my backyard looking at them big old things. It was so embarrassing. I said, Lord, I fell victim to this plot. I nailed down and I said, Lord, please forgive me in Jesus' name. Amen. And do you know what? From that moment on, that bondage broke off my life. That yoke broke off my life. Things happen that God could deliver. He delivered us from that. He delivered us from that home. And not only did it deliver us, but put us, put us in a probably six-month-old house that a, pus a person bought but then was transferred to another state. So the company sold it to us, and it was a beautiful house from a little bitty shack with the biggest solar system on it. It looked like little Martian, Martians live there. I asked God to forgive me and deliver me. He delivered us, delivered me from that house, delivered me from all that, all that bondage and took us. And from that moment on, I started seeing the breakthroughs in our life. Breakthroughs. Why? Because I humbled myself to kneel down. I didn't care about my neighbors. I kneeled down 
and ask, Lord, please forgive me. This shall never happen again. And from that moment on, I'm not quick to make decisions. Not by fear, because I want the Holy Ghost in it. I've learned if I make decisions based on me or what others say, it's going to flop, but I'd rather have the Holy Spirit speak. And when the Holy Spirit speaks, I know it's going to be 100% pure, effective, successful in Jesus. Can you say amen? Come on, church. See, that's what we got to learn today. Live a life of dominion and authority, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Say with me, amen. Live a life of authority and dominion, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. You have your assignments. Stand up, ladies and gentlemen. You have your assignments. Hallelujah. You have your assignments. Come on, say me. I got it. You have your assignments. You've got the answer to what you're dealing with today. You got a word from heaven today. Hallelujah. And the Lord is saying, when is enough and enough? When is enough? Say with me, it's now. My, if this enough is now, it's over now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. Oh, we come to you in Yeshua. Hallelujah. Shor robata. We've come to you, Father. Lord, we recognize, Jesus, you love us so much, God. You love us like a father loves his children. You love us so much, God. We see, we see what you're telling us, Lord. Lord, you telling us, Lord, to break every yoke in the name of Jesus. Father, we shall arise. I may have fallen, but I will arise. Lord, you are with me, Lord. We will arise, Lord Jesus, and we're breaking every yoke from this moment on. Yokes coming off our bodies. Yokes coming off our minds. Yokes coming off our, our situations. Yokes coming off our finances. Yokes coming off our family. Come on. Family in the name of Jesus. We break every yoke in the name of Jesus. Every yoke in Jesus' name. Every decision in the name of Jesus. The yokes are being broken in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. Now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that we're free. Free indeed. We're free. We're free indeed, Jesus. We're free indeed in the name of Jesus. We're free indeed in the name of Jesus. We're free indeed in the name of Jesus.